Are you tired of searching all over the internet for someone to tell you how this whole money exchange thing works in Japan? Well, look no further. I'm going to give you all the answers to the burning questions like how to exchange your money in a way that you're not hit with a bunch of fees, whether you should use cash or credit, and whether you really need an IC card. This is the video you need to watch all the way through before you go to Japan. Let's get started. Now, I'm sure you want to get the most bang for your buck when you're exchanging your money for your Japan trip, right? Well, I've got a simple yet effective strategy that can save you a ton of cash. First, forget about exchanging money at the airport or those fancy currency exchange booths. They might seem convenient, but they often have terrible rates and hidden fees that can eat away at your precious travel budget. Let me give you a quick primer on how currency exchanges work and why I can make such a bold statement. Unlike in many other Asian countries, foreign currency is not readily accepted in Japan, so while you may want to take a stash of dollars or pounds or euros from home, you'll need to change them at a currency exchange or a bank into yen. If I pull up Google and type in yen to dollar currency exchange rate, you'll see that right now at this minute, for every dollar I have, it's equal to 151.39 yen. This is called the mid market rate. Each type of money or currency has a value compared to others and these values can go up and down daily. Think of the exchange rate changes like ice cream flavors popularity. If chocolate becomes a favorite, its value goes up and another flavor may go down in value in comparison. So when you hear that one US dollar is equal to 151.39 yen, it's a snapshot of how much more or less in demand dollars are compared to yen at that moment. Awesome. So for every dollar I spend in Japan, I can buy 50% more stuff, right? Well, that's not necessarily true. While a favorable exchange rate does mean that your money could go further in Japan than back at home, the actual benefit you receive will depend on the broader context of cost, inflation, and fees. Fees. Those pesky, pesky fees. And that's what brings me back to my point. Airport exchange counters charge fees on top of each dollar that you're trying to exchange. So this website on screen is for one of the airport exchange counters in Narita Airport. This one will only give you 149 yen for every dollar, even though the fair mid-market range that we just checked was higher. And each of the exchange counters at the airport get to decide the fees that they're going to charge. Instead, here's the secret. Use your ATM card at a 7-Eleven or Japan Post Bank ATM once you arrive in Japan. These ATMs accept most international cards and offer some of the best exchange rates that you'll find. But when using an ATM in Japan other than a 7-Eleven ATM, you'll probably be hit by two fees. One is the foreign transaction fee, which varies based on your home bank and not the ATM. And the other fee is from the ATM. Most, although not all, international ATMs will deduct minor service fees when you use a foreign issued card. But believe it or not, you have complete control over these fees. If your current banking provider charges you for taking cash out of your account in a foreign currency, then you should sign up for a new account specifically for your trip as soon as possible. It'll save you a fortune in fees and it's not difficult to do. So let's take a look at a quick example. These are the foreign transaction fee rates for the major banking institutions in the US. Based on this chart, let's say that I bank with Bank of America and I decide to withdraw the maximum for the day out of the ATM in Japan, which is 100,000 yen or 661 US dollars based on today's rates. Bank of America will charge me a flat $5 international ATM fee. And then on top of that, another 3% foreign transaction fee of the total amount, which is around $20. And then finally, there's that $1.45 that the Japan ATM is going to charge me, bringing my total all the way down from $661 to $634.55. That's about a 4% reduction of my withdrawal just in fees alone. In general though, ATMs will charge a lower exchange fee than the exchange counters, and you shouldn't be paying more than 3% above the mid-market rate for any exchange counter. But again, skip the airport exchange counters if you can. The beauty of specifically using 7-Eleven ATMs in Japan is that 7-Bank ATM fees and the Japan 7-Eleven ATM fee is zero for foreign cards that are on the Maestro or MasterCard network. Now, some travelers have reported that there's a 110 to 220 yen fee for cards on the Visa network, depending on the amount that you withdraw. So that's about 73 cents to $1.45 based on the current market rate. Be sure to check with your service provider about that as well. So if you really want to save when you're withdrawing money in Japan, use an ATM card from your bank that doesn't have foreign currency charges and fees and withdraw from a 7-Eleven ATM. Then you would have really hit the jackpot. Speaking of, before you leave for Japan, be sure to contact your bank 
bank and let them know that you're traveling overseas. Some have automatic fraud protection, which is usually a good thing, but it's not when it's activated when you're trying to withdraw the cash that you need. And I'll also post a link in the description to a rundown of all the information I was able to find for the debit cards and credit cards that have reasonable to exceptional foreign transaction fees or rebates or no fees at all. This is a really great resource. So if you're traveling soon and you still have the time to open a bank account with a more generous transaction allowance, it would be well worth the effort. Be sure to check that out. It's one of the best money saving tips I can give for your trip to Japan. And if you're already getting some value out of the tips that I've shared, please take a second to press the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm giving you the tips that you need in order to make the most of your trip to Japan and there are so many more videos to come. Now, a few more quick tips on the ATM. When you use your ATM outside of your home country, many of them will offer to charge you in your home currency. This is called dynamic currency conversion or DCC. Do not accept the dynamic currency conversion. Instead, choose to be charged in the local currency and let your own bank do the conversion at home. This dynamic conversion is a hidden way that ATMs overcharge you. If you opt to allow for the conversion to your own currency, the ATM will charge you a fee for that conversion, which is usually about 1% of the purchase or withdrawal amount. You're much better off electing to keep the rate in your local yen currency and then let your bank at home do the conversion. Always choose to be charged in yen. Also, the 7-Eleven ATM has a 100,000 yen per day withdrawal limit, so that's something to keep in mind when it comes to adding up fees for each withdrawal. Another thing to be aware of is that most international ATMs and the cash machine at 7-Elevens will accept all major international credit cards. But remember, if you're using your credit card at the ATM and not your debit card, it's essentially counted as a cash advance and you'll start paying interest on the amount immediately. It's important to note that cash advances from credit cards usually come with very high fees and interest rates compared to standard purchases. So it's generally recommended to use this option only in emergencies or when other forms of payment are not available. And finally, if you do bring cash from home that you need to change in Japan, you should make sure that the notes you bring are clean and undamaged. It may sound trivial, but damaged or dirty notes are likely to be rejected by the currency exchange if you use one. One of the biggest concerns that most travelers have when visiting Japan is how much cash they should carry or how much money they should bring with them for an enjoyable yet still reasonably affordable trip. Unfortunately, there's no real magic answer that's going to fit everyone's travel needs, but I do suggest carrying at least 200 US dollars or 30,000 yen with you to get yourself started in the city. This is a good enough amount to get you into the city, find your first meals for the first day, and have enough pocket change with you to feel comfortable in an emergency. This amount will also give you enough of a cushion to get you from the airport to the city to find a 7-Eleven ATM and pull out additional cash. And don't worry about carrying around large amounts of cash in Japan. It's a very safe country. And a handy tool that I found online that might give you even more insight on starting to estimate how much your trip could cost overall is a site called Kampai Japan. This site has a handy calculator that allows you to input some of the variables that can influence the price of your trip the most, and it's a good place to start. It's definitely not gospel, and you should only use this as a starting point, but it's still a good free resource if you're totally in the dark and figuring out how much your trip might cost. I'll link to it below. The other resource that I highly recommend is searching through the subreddit forums on reddit.com. My favorites are Japan Travel and Japan Travel Tips. There's so many chat threads from over the years where travelers have posted their itineraries, expenses, and budgeting tips. It's always my go-to when I'm planning a trip to Japan because the conversations are current, relevant, and honest. Now, we've covered cash and all the best ways to handle it in Japan, but another thing that's probably running through your mind right now is, but what about my credit card? Now, cash is still king for the most part in Japan, but you can still use your credit card in a lot of places. While you'll be able to use your credit card at large hotels, restaurants, and retail outlets, many smaller shops and dining establishments still don't accept credit cards. And one thing that you'll find in smaller shops is that even if they do accept credit cards, many only accept credit cards from Japanese banks like JCB. Smaller hotels and ryokans in towns may not accept credit cards either, and you should definitely check while you're making your booking. And places with entrance fees such as Shinto shrines, Buddhist temples, and castles are definitely cash only. And don't forget, most major credit cards charge foreign transaction fees for each purchase made abroad, and they're usually in the 3% range. So while these fees may seem small, they can really add up over the course of your trip. I've added some foreign transaction free credit card options on my list as well, so be sure to download them.
of that. Even though credit cards have become more commonplace, it's safer to bring cash along with your credit cards when traveling in Japan. The major credit cards you can use in Japan are Visa and MasterCard. There are stores that accept American Express and Diner Club cards, but it's not unusual for a store to not accept these cards. These cards can be used at most stores and restaurants selling high-end products. Now that we've tackled currency exchange, let's dive into another game changer for your wallet in Japan, the power of IC cards and mobile payments. But before we do that, I want to check in and know what questions you have about using money in Japan. Or if you've already been, what are some of the secrets that you can share with new travelers that might help them on their trip? Drop your comments below so that we can all chime in. Rechargeable smart cards or IC cards are the most convenient way to pay for many things in Japan. These cards are mainly used for public transportation, including trains and buses, but they're so ubiquitous you can also use them to pay for things at convenience stores, vending machines, and even some shops and restaurants. The main IC cards used in Tokyo are Suica and Pasmo, but you'll find regional versions of these cards in different areas across the country. You can easily top up or load your IC card with money at stations, convenience stores, or even through your mobile phone if you have the Apple Wallet version of the card. You can purchase a new card at nearly any train station ticket machine for a 500 yen deposit. But keep in mind that these cards are only valid for 28 days and they're non-refundable, except for your deposit. So be careful about putting too much on the card because if you don't use up all the money you have on your card, you'll end up losing the money when the card expires. There are actually two versions of the Suica IC card that you can choose from, a traditional physical version and a digital card on your phone. Check out my next video where I'll walk you through how to purchase and use an IC card and step by step how to add your Suica card onto your phone. By setting up your Suica card on your phone, you're not just simplifying your travel in Japan, you're unlocking a smoother, more seamless way to experience everything the country has to offer from trains to vending machines. And if you're totally addicted to Apple Pay like I am, there's good news. Both Apple Pay and Google Pay work in Japan too. They're super convenient as they're most likely already installed on your phone. But keep in mind, these are digital wallets, so you'll need to add a payment method as well. While more and more places in Japan are embracing the contactless, cashless future, you'll come across many restaurants, cafes, local shops, gas stations, and even hotels that have cash-only signs clearly displayed at the register. Restaurants especially often accept cash only for lunch, when they typically serve cheap, low-profit margin meals. In Japan, currency is seen as real, immediate, and safe and free of the fees that the payment providers charge to the merchants. So even though you might be spoiled like me when it comes to cashless payments, I recommend that you always carry some yen around with you when you're in Japan. Oh, and don't forget your coin purse or wallet. Anything 500 yen and under will be given back to you in change. And don't throw away your change like you might at home. A 500 yen coin is equal to $3.30 based on current rates. And when paying, put the money onto the provided tray, preferably with bills neatly unfolded. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You're now armed with the knowledge to weave through Japan's financial landscape like a pro and save some serious cash in the process. Here are your main takeaways to remember from today's video. First and foremost, remember to steer clear of those airport currency exchange booths and head straight for the 7-Eleven or Japan Post Bank ATMs. That's where you'll find the best exchange rates and the lowest fees. And while we're on the topic of ATMs, make sure you've got the right bank account, credit card, and ATM card to minimize those pesky foreign transaction charges. When using your card, always select to be charged in yen to avoid the dynamic currency conversion trap. And don't forget to give your bank a heads up about your travel plans to keep that fraud protection at bay. Start with around 200 US dollars and use resources like the Compi website and Reddit forums to get a sense of your trip costs and budget accordingly. And don't forget, cash is still king in Japan, especially at smaller shops, restaurants, and tourist spots. But that doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of the convenience of IC cards like Suica and Pasmo for public transport and small purchases. And if you really want to travel like a local, consider going digital and placing your IC card on your phone for contactless pay. And last but not least, I'll remind you again, always carry some cash on you. And don't forget to keep those coins. And remember to use the cash trays when you're making purchases. It's the little things that show respect and make your travel smoother. So there you have it, your crash course in mastering money while traveling in Japan. 
Japan. Now, don't forget to check out the links in the description. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more Japan travel tips. Now that you've got your finances sorted, how would you like to travel around Japan like a pro? Stay tuned for these next videos, where I'll unlock the secrets to navigating Japan's transport system effortlessly and with some pretty awesome discounts. And I'll even show you how to add your Shinkansen tickets to your Suica app for more seamless travel. You won't want to miss these insider tips. I'll see you then.